Let's face it, as popular as the Mac Mini is, the design has not been changed in more than 10 years. And as we all know, the Mac Mini isn't really as mini as it could actually be. There's a massive amount of internal space that ever since the switch to Apple Silicon has remained completely empty. And nowadays, there's increasingly strong competition from Windows manufacturers. Remember, a couple of years ago, if you wanted to get a, a Windows machine that was as small as a Mac Mini, you were probably gonna get a Celeron or a Laptop Core i5. But today's video sponsor, Geekcom, thinks they can do a little bit better, because they sent over this. This is the IT13, and it is a mini PC with a 13th generation Core i9, 32 gigabytes of RAM, and two terabytes of storage. Those are some pretty serious specs, and you can already tell from the box that this thing is seriously mini. So today, let's explore these mini PCs. Specifically, how does the M2 Pro Mac Mini compare to this high-end 13th Gen i9 machine? And I think we better start with an unboxing. Okay, time to find out just how mini this thing really is. Oh, oh wow. Okay, that, <laughs> that is a truly tiny PC. Let's see what else we get in the box here. We've got a thank you note here, and I'm assuming this is gonna be our power brick. Yes, that's gonna be one advantage that the Mac Mini unquestionably has is a built-in power supply. This thing is a little bit beefy. Looks like it's 120 watts, so weirdly, this is a smaller power supply than the Mac Mini. The Mac Mini has 150 watts, built into it, which is not necessary. Even the M2 Pro only consumes like 40 or 50, but they, they just use the same power supply out of the old 2018 Mac Mini. So that's a little bit of inefficiency there. But anyway, we've got our external power supply and what looks like an HDMI cable included. And here's our power extension. And then this is actually pretty cool because in the bottom of the bag here, we have a VESA mounting plate. This is so that you could actually mount your PC behind your monitor and have a completely invisible setup. Now the enclosure here is plastic compared to Apple's use of aluminum, but I think it's a fair trade-off because this thing is under $1,000. In fact, at the time of filming this video, it's on sale for less than $800. That is significantly cheaper than the M2 Pro Mac Mini, and it is more in line really with the M2 Mac Mini that only comes with an eighth of the storage and a quarter of the RAM. Now, you know what I've also noticed? We've got a little bag of screws, and that's because this mini PC, well, it is certainly tiny, is actually expandable. So I think we gotta do something that I've done a couple times before, and that is basically tear down this machine before I've even turned it on. So this top piece here, seems like that just pops right off, giving us access to the fan. Now, there's also some Phillips head screws here in the rubber feet on the bottom. So we're gonna just go ahead and start with those. So the bottom feet here are actually captive screws and that means we can pull this whole thing up without those getting lost. And what you'll notice here, first of all, is there is our PCIe Gen 4 two terabyte NVMe SSD. Looks like this is a Lexar unit. And we've got our 32 gigabytes of DDR4 RAM. This is also by Lexar. Now, you'll notice this little ribbon cable here, and that's because over in the bottom, we have an unused 2.5 inch SSD bay. So this thing already has two terabytes, but without having to replace that storage, we could just add an additional hard drive, an additional SSD. Oh my God, and I just noticed we have another M.2 SSD slot. So you can put three SSDs in this tiny machine. That's pretty cool. I'm very impressed. This is a very clever little design here and we have a good selection of IO all around it. There's an SD card slot here on the side. Around the front, there's two USB A's and a headphone jack. And around the back, we have two USB 4 ports, two HDMI 2.0 ports, a two and a half gigabit ethernet port, and then a USB 2.0 type A and a USB 3.2 Gen 2 type A. Not bad selection there. So I think we gotta reassemble here and turn this thing on. I'm very, very interested to see how this compares to an M2 Pro Mac Mini. 
So with the IT13 all set up, I'm definitely excited to check out how this thing performs. For one, because as far as I'm aware, this is the first ultra compact form factor PC to feature a Core i9 like this. And, and second, because the Core i9-13900H is a fairly uncommon CPU. In fact, you might confuse it for a 13900HX, which is the higher end chip used in super powerful gaming laptops, like one that I reviewed earlier this year. The 13900H is a smaller power consumption chip with 14 cores compared to the 24 in the HX. So I'm really curious to see how it stacks up against the M2 Pro. And before we get into the results, there's two things that I want you to keep in mind. Number one, I'm using the base model $1,299 M2 Pro Mac Mini. That means it's got the binned 10 core CPU and the binned 16 core GPU. And the other thing to keep in mind is the form factor of both of these machines. I highly doubt that the i9 is going to be able to stretch its legs fully in such a tiny package. Now the first test that I ran was Blender Classroom on the CPU. And surprisingly, the chips are running basically neck and neck. About three seconds separates them. 745 on the M2 Pro, 748 on the i9-13900H. So what about in Cinebench 2024? This is a great test because it's gonna absolutely pin the CPU. And interestingly enough, I noticed that while running this test, the Geekcom IT13 is one of the only Intel machines that didn't have a screaming loud fan. And that definitely struck me as odd. When you put a Core i9 inside a four inch by four inch by two inch box, you would expect it to have a loud fan. And yet when all was said and done, we have a score of 730 on the IT13 and 786 on the M2 Pro Mac Mini. But things got pretty interesting when I ran the test again with some system monitoring tools enabled because I noticed that the IT13 was running a lot cooler than you would typically expect. As the test wore on, our CPU temperatures climbed up into the 70s, but no higher than that. That's remarkably cool for an Intel machine. And yet our CPU is only consuming 35 watts of power. And according to Intel, that is the minimum assured power for this CPU. So it's a very interesting situation. Number one, we're not using the full potential of this CPU simply because this is an absolutely tiny computer. So it seems an intentional choice to run the CPU at a lower wattage so that we can get those impressive low temperatures. But number two is that even when running on the minimum assured power, we're seeing numbers very similar to the M2 Pro. And that's not just true of the CPU, but of the GPU as well. We're seeing a similar trend here. The M2 Pro managed about 30 FPS on average compared to 22 FPS on average for the Intel Z integrated graphics on this Core i9. And that's with both machines running at 1080p on the very high preset in Tomb Raider. But while we're seeing similar performance here, when you're talking about SSD speeds, things are very different. Not only does the more expensive Mac mini have just a quarter of the storage capacity, but it's significantly slower than the PCIe Gen 4 SSD in the IT13. So some really, really interesting results in these tests. I was not sure what to expect when comparing the double binned M2 Pro Mac mini to an unusual Core i9 that you don't really see and that you certainly will not find in other ultra compact form factor PCs. So a ton of curveballs here, and it's kind of crazy that both of these machines ended up performing very neck and neck. But of course, performance is only part of the story, and there's a lot of nuance between these devices, and quite frankly, a lot of personal preference that's involved when comparing them. But I think it is worth noting that the Geekcom has arguably better standard equipment. As I mentioned at the beginning of the video, this thing is under $800 right now. That's more than $500 cheaper than the Mac mini, but as we've seen, it offers very similar performance as well as four times the storage capacity at a faster speed, no less, and the ability to easily add additional SSDs. You could absolutely max this thing out with 10 terabytes of internal storage if you wanted to, and that's pretty hilarious. And you're not skimping out in other areas to hit that price point. We still have Wi-Fi 6E, we still have USB 4, two and a half gigabit networking, and HDMI 2.0. 
So picking between these machines is not a simple task. And I know that there's gonna be Mac mini diehards in the comments, as well as micro PC diehards telling you that you're an idiot if you pick whichever one they don't like. But the key takeaway for me is that micro PCs are getting ridiculously good. It wasn't that long ago when Apple was selling Mac minis that could only be configured with crappy dual core processors. And it wasn't that long ago where these tiny, tiny micro PCs would have been running Celerons. But now we're sitting here able to compare these machines with cutting edge chips and tons of performance at a thousand dollar price point. That is pretty impressive. And I guarantee if you hopped in a time machine and you went back to 2017 and told yourself about either of these machines and what they can do, you would not believe you. So definitely let me know your thoughts in the comments below. These are really interesting machines and I think a very interesting comparison. The Geekcom IT13 is really leveling up what these micro PCs are able to do and I just think this is a really crazy time to be into stuff like this. So a big thanks to Geekcom for sponsoring this video. Big thanks to you guys for watching. Let me know all of your thoughts in the comments below. Be sure to like and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one.